Hello, welcome back to Fireasys Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue our Susan 2.0. So, last time out, we had our um, internationally televised interview. We had a little dinner meeting thing with Lilius, where she told us that she's going to be challenging us for the party leadership, which was honestly pretty expected. And then we had our military parade that was supposed to show off our might, but uh, it was it was not the greatest parade I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, let's go and continue on to the next churn here. Will of the States. This should be the end game right here, so we're almost done with this playthrough. For better or for worse, we'll uh, we'll find out soon. All right. So, our one and only report here is from Holsword on the Schedule for the Alliance of Nations session. We have received the schedule for the upcoming Alliance of Nations session. According to the dates outlined, Swordland 1 is being prepared for the flight to Constantium Kyrate. Minister of Foreign Affairs David Bishi will be attending the session, as well as accompanying Mr. President on the flight. Cool. And our one and only newspaper from Geopolitico, World Leaders to Gather at the Alliance of Nations. Calling for a session on the current affairs, world leaders will be gathering at the Alliance of Nations next week. The main highlights from the upcoming agenda were announced, and as expected, they'll be around the current issues in Eastern Maricopa. In addition to the member states from the region, President Walker and Chairman Milenev will be delivering their speeches at the Assembly. All eyes will turn to Constantium Kairut, as the historic session will be taking place in the Alliance of Nations headquarters. Julio. Oh, this is cool and new. Let's get a little football action here at the Merck Open Champions Cup. Today, the management of FC Honorka had invited me to attend a pivotal football match. At least in judging, I accepted. The team is representing Swordland in the international arena. According to Lucian, it would have been unpresidential not to put in an appearance. FC Honorka was finally in the Mercopian Champions Cup, the most prestigious football tournament in the world. For the first time ever, Sorge team had managed to qualify for the knockout phase. Millions of Sorge people are waiting to watch FC Honorka complete against, uh, compete against the legendary racing team Real Mon uh, Monteclar. Despite all odds being stacked against the team, the mood is full of hope. Cool. So I'm guessing Rizia is supposed to be like some sort of a weird stand-in for Spain with Real Monteclar probably being Real Madrid. Nice. A win today would bring Annika to the quarterfinals, a feat that no Sorge team had ever managed to achieve. And of course, all presidents of Swordland, current and former, were invited to watch the sort competition. Well, not all presidents. I'm pretty sure there's one uh, sitting in a jail cell who's not coming. I was told that my president, uh, my predecessor, Eva Alfonso, will be joining me in the lounge reserve for us. How are you feeling, sir? I'm fine, Lucian. Thank you. We made our way towards the Marine Stadium. The arena was situated in one of the most crowded quarters of Anarka, surrounded by a dense urban development. As we wound our way through the streets, I noticed the name of Tarkin Soul everywhere. Since, uh, since I'd last been here, markets, restaurants, even pubs named after the colonel had all popped up. Why is Anarka so crazy about Soul all of a sudden? I noticed it as well. I've heard it's part of an ad campaign for Anarka, an attempt to draw tourists, so only Solus ones to the city. Soul's legacy still lives on for millions, after all. Lucian's pocket radio crackled. After spawning, he turned to me. Sir, the security gave us the all clear. Please follow the guards to the top floor. You'll be seated in the VIP lounge. Any advice before I leave? You know the guests far more than I do, sir. If all else fails, just focus on the match. It shouldn't be difficult. Even just the fact you're here will surely help our campaign image. I hope so, Lucian. I followed Skirney. We entered beneath a giant sign that read, Welcome to the Hall of Martyrs. That's not sketchy at all, okay. And the corridors inside were painted almost completely in maroon. Adorning them were various depictions of the Sorge goat and numerous jerseys, awards, and team photographs. On our way up, I was greeted by the president of the club. Beaming with pride, he immediately took my hand. Behind him, Mayor Curtin Les and Gus Monger were waiting to greet me as well. All of them had FC Anarka pins attached to their collars. Welcome to Anarka, Mr. President. You're always welcome, Anarka, and it's great to see you show support in person. Thanks for being here. This match means a lot for all of us Anarkans. And all of Solgland, never before the Sorge team reached a stage in the Merck Open Cup. 
I have high hopes for today. This is a big achievement for Swordish football. The football is rapidly expanding importance in Swordland and beyond. It's good to see we have an opportunity in it. Or it's good that we see the opportunity in it. The president of the club walked in, handed us gift bags full of FC Honor merchandise, and gave a speech stressing the importance of today's match. After delivering his best wishes, he kindly pointed us towards the lounge, which was surrounded by heavily armed men. Once I found myself inside, I was greeted by an amazing view of the entire pitch through floor-to-ceiling windows. I took a seat on the leather sofa and watched as the action began. The stadium erupted in applause as the players started coming out onto the field. As the players of Real Montclair lined up in the middle of the field, FC Honor fans started, started chanting, We'll eat you whole for Colonel Soul. <laughs> what the hell? Right after the referee signaled the start of the match, the door behind us closed with a thud. Well, Mr. President, what do you think about the city's new marketing plan? I doubt the colonel will prove his name and use his tourist draw, but he's not around anymore, is he? Evel Alfonso quickly walked up to me, shook my hand, and sat next to me with a grin. Mr. Alfonso, how have you been since the trial? Honestly, I've never been better. It feels as if a huge weight has been lifted. You know, it was actually Gus Bonjay's idea, turning Honorka into the City of Seoul. And without him, Honorka wouldn't be a city as today, but his instincts may have failed him with his ill-time strategy. Gus must realize he's hitting Seoul's cult of personality with stunts like this. Eh, you and I both know Gus. His only allegiance is to his own bank account. Anyway, we didn't come here to talk to Mr. Manger. We came here to watch our men win. You know. Just then, FC Anarka star midfielder made a breakaway down the field. The crowd erupted into cheers as the ball was passed from player to player, each touch bringing it closer to the goal. Right, look, we're going to score. As if on cue, Real Monoclar's defense made a crucial block, sending the ball back down the field. Ah, well, damn. Nah, they'll get it next time. Have some faith in our team. That's the spirit. He turned to me. So, how about you, Mr. Rain? It's been a while since we last met. Is everything going well at the palace? Honestly, I'm worried. The country's sh showing signs of instability again. Yeah, yes, Mr. Rain. Storage politics getting complicated again. You have to be careful. Suddenly, a huge roar shook the stadium. The crowd was in a frenzy as FC Anarka finally got the ball past the dominating Rizian defenders. Considering that Rumber is actively pushing for war, you seem too composed to call Mr. Rain. Well, as the president, I have to be. You know how it is, Mr. Former President. Just then, Monoclair midfielders executed an incredibly fast counterattack, scoring a goal that put them ahead in just a few seconds. The sort of side of the stadium fell completely silent. Eh, yeah, it's bad luck getting a top tier racing team as our opponent. I still applaud our guys for giving the best. Not even FC Gelsor has ever come this far in an international tournament. Let's go with that. Yes, football's like politics. Sometimes it's all about luck. Yeah, it's not about luck, it's about money. The only noise could be heard from the stadium was shouting from the Rizian side, Montclar. All eyes were glued to the scoreboard as a new score appeared. FC Anarka nil, Real Montclar won. From that moment on, we turned our complete attention to the match in front of us. And the Rizian players kept dominating the field. The referee blew the whistle. It was halftime. Yeah, that was rough. When we heard a noise from above us, a Zeppelin was flying over the stadium with a giant poster hanging beneath it. I noticed it was an advertisement for the Alfonso Foundation. At the center of the poster stood Evel Alfonso, portrayed with a warm smile and a twinkle in his eye. In his outstretched hand, he held a whimsical compass, glowing with a soft golden light. Surrounding him were people from all walks of life and cultures. The tagline, written in elegant and uplifting typography, was prominently displayed at the bottom. Alfonso Foundation, bringing hope to those in need, one act of kindness at a time. Now you're asking for donations at football matches? How does a non-profit even afford this ad? I'm doing my best to increase our exposure and to help the homeless of this country. This isn't some commercial advertisement. 
just sent the speakers in the stadium started playing a sound recording in full volume. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a message from the Alfonso Foundation dedicated to spreading kindness and hope to the less fortunate. Picture a soul and where compassion shines brighter than the stars in the night sky, where the power of generosity uplifts those who need it most. And that soul can exist thanks to the Alfonso Foundation. Led by the charismatic and esteemed president Eva Alfonso, this foundation is on a mission to make a difference in the lives of all fellow citizens, one act of kindness at a time. Every soulish rent you donate to the Alfonso Foundation helps, uh, helps provide shelter, food, and a chance for a brighter future to those without a home, without hope. Thanks to the donations of President Evel Alfonso and steam figures like President Anton Rain, as well as thousands of soulish citizens, the Alfonso Foundation has already lifted thousands out of homelessness. Won't you join us in this noble endeavor? Just call the number 1600 Alfonso to make your contribution today. Your support will help us extend a helping hand to those in need. And the recording ended with a few seconds of upbeat, jazzy background music that slowly faded out. Oh my god. I, I really want to say, uh, what the hell was that? Because that is my response. But it's good to see that you're at least helping the poor in some way. That is commendable. And thanks for the support. Unlike Sol, I'm trying to use my retirement to make a change. I believe there's a lot of value in using my clout to generate money for those in need. And I support your endeavors in that. I really appreciate that. Suddenly, we turn our heads to the field as a massive roar shook the stadium. The second half was already in full swing, and honor can players were aggressively attacking, weaving in and out of defenders with speed. Suddenly, the ball is passed to the, fam passed to the famous Swordish striker. I don't know why that was so hard to say. Hakan Zlater, who is in front of the goal. And the Swordish cried out crazy as Zlater's powerful shot brought the ball to the back of the Rizin net. Yes. Evil jumped from his seat. Suddenly, the cheering was interrupted by the linesman raising the flag, making an offside call. Ah, bullshit. That wasn't offside. Yeah, the referee's trying to sabotage us. He's clearly in front of the defenders when he received the ball. Ah, the angle is all wrong. A decision like that shouldn't be made without proper evaluation. <laughs> well, what next? You're going to install cameras and analyze every position from different angles? It's taking a dig at VAR. I love it. The excitement in the stadium reached a fever pitch. A sort of striker dribbled the ball past two defenders, took a shot at the goal again. The crowd held its breath as the ball sailed through the air, but the monoclar goalkeeper made a miraculous save. Ah, damn. That was very close. And he suddenly pointed to a group of people holding signs in the front row. Do you see that? And his group of honorkins were holding signs read, FC Honorka stands against rain. Another massive sign displayed the words, Soldiers, leave your barracks, save your colonel's dignity. Ah, they need to be arrested for putting up such signs. Uh, let's let's go with that. These are some very dangerous signs. How are they even allowed inside of them? Eh, hey, Anarchus full of people like this these days. Home of the Colonel, remember? Suddenly, a wave of shouting made his folks back on the field. An Anarchan player was shown a yellow card. With only a few minutes left on the clock, it looked as though the match would end with one nil loss for FC Anarcha. But suddenly, everything changed. Number 10 of Real Monoclar dribbled expertly towards the goal and effortlessly scored as Honorkin defenders watched him in shock. Yeah, I knew it. We watched in silence as scoreboard was modified to display FC Honorkin nil, Real Monoclar 2. The Rizian side broke into massive applause as the referee blew the final whistle. Eh, not very unexpected, really. We should go down and console the boys. We left the lounge and went downstairs to congratulate the team for their efforts. Cool, alright. Let's see. Well, I guess let's check out the newspaper here. From the Lockhaven Times, heartbreak for FC Anarcha as Real Monoclar secures a dominant 2 0 victory in the Mercopa Cup knockout. In a highly anticipated Mercopa Cup, ma Cup knockout match, FC Anarcha faced a formidable challenge from Real Monteclar, and sadly, their dreams of advancing further in the prestigious tournament were shattered. 
The match ended with a convincing 2-0 victory for Real Montsclair, leaving the Honorkin fans crestfallen. The encounter started with a swift blow from Real Montsclair as they swiftly found the net to take an early lead. FC Honorka tried valiantly to stage a comeback, and their celebrated striker Hakan Zlatter almost provided a glimmer of hope with a potential equalizing goal. However, the referee's controversial decision deemed the effort off uh, offside, dashing the Honorkin hopes. Despite FC Honorka's relentless efforts, Real Montclair's defense stood firm, thwarting every attack. In a pivotal moment in the late game, Real Montclair star Alfredo Enzima uh, stole the spotlight by scoring a powerful goal, solidifying their victory. Despite the heartbreak, FC Honorka's journey in the Mercopen Cup was nothing short of inspiring. They captured the nation's imagination with their exceptional performances and united the country behind their footballing prowess. President Rain conveyed his unwavering support and uh, Jeez, an unwavering sport and admiration for the team after the match. There we go. Cool. Alright, and we're going somewhere. Oh, cool, alright. Alliance Nations, but we're actually going to Kyrie on the map. That's cool. Alright. I, David Vichy, and the rest of the Swordish delegation of the Alliance of Nations arrived in Cairo. The local police escorted us to the Alliance's headquarters in downtown Constantium, immediately recognizable by its gleaming dome. On entering the building, we were met by a parliamentary guide who briefed us about the procedures. After strict security screening, the staff ash ushered us to the third floor. We entered the massive circular assembly hall and took our designated seats. David sat next to me. All of the world's most powerful people under one gleaming dome. It's amazing how someone managed to fill a room with people that absolutely loathe each other. It is truly astounding. Humanity's come far. Uh, how are you feeling, Anton? Being subject to so much media attention must take a toll on you and the family. It comes with the job. Monica and I already came to terms with the risk after the inauguration ball. Uh, it is tough to be the president. Making harsh decisions and dealing with consequences. I wish I could support you more, but Tyra's been a cruel mistress. For what it's worth, I appreciate all the advice you've given me. Yeah, thank you, Anton. From a distance, we could see the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Nines, approaching his designated position. Well, the session's about to start. Let's get comfortable. Hey, it's going to be a long day. Mr. Nines opened the session with a short speech and called the first speaker to the floor. It is my great pleasure to invite the Prime Minister of Lesbia to address the Assembly. Patricio Alvarez stood up and walked to the podium as the assembly applauded. Mr. President, it is my pleasure to attend to this podium. David leaned in and spoke in a low voice. Right, let's see how crazy this year's session will get. I mean, I'm surprised he's drunk. David chuckled. When I last spoke here, the message I gave was of encouragement and support to this organization and the vital role it plays. Of all the challenges Eastern Macopa and the whole world has faced since then, one has grown larger and more imminent than any other. The threat of the so-called socialist states and the actions taken by their authoritarian rulers with no regard to international law. A loud noise came from the table of Oxen. I saw Emmerich Hegel pounding his fists on the table in protest. Looks like the Chancellor's already mad. David nodded. Today, the needs come together as the leaders of the free world is more important than ever. The CSP, under the leadership of United Quintana, has be uh, been fueling Vogsen's military industrial complex and expansionist aims in Eastern Macopa. The world turned a blind eye when the armies of Vogsen occupied Hellion, and, and they did not stop there. Uh, according to our intelligence reports, United Quintana made nuclear mis missiles were quickly deployed to the island. He pulled out a photograph. Even though it's hard to see from my position, I recognize it as an aerial image of Helluland. We demand that the Chancellor speak the truth. As you can all see, we have evidence of the construction of silos. Do you think that's true? Yeah, honestly, this is always like likely to happen, but so soon after the occupation, I didn't expect that. David looked concerned. No Eastern Macopan nation can accept the installation of weapons of mass destruction in the middle of our Machian Sea. Emmerich Hegel stood up and kept pounding his fists. We hereby call for the immediate dismantling and withdrawal of all missiles and other offensive weapons from Helluland. We invite all the member states to support our call for resolution in accordance with Article 11 of the Falenko Treaty. 
A lot of noise came from the assembly hall in response. Most of Western Recopen uh, delegates were clapping, while others either shouted in protest or sat in stony silence. Let us also not forget about the recent events that transpired in another state with socialist teachings. A state that wages war against its own innocent citizens, Valen. Uh, I'm just going to keep listening. Their purge of the minorities in their country was, again, largely ignored by the national committee. I would go so far as to call it genocide. They violated our past treaties, mobilized armed forces, pulling them close to our borders and authorizing them to partake in massacres. Lesbia is affected not only by the large wave of refugees coming from Valen, but by the subsequent government seizure of all of our companies that are active in the country. We have our called member states to action against Valen and its rogue government. Thank you. I'm just not going to react. He walked back to his seat amidst enthusiastic applause from most of the Merkopa delegates. President Nines waited for the noise to calm down and invited the next speaker, President of Valen, Victor Smolak. Smolak stood up as he walked past Patricio Alvarez. He brushed him aside with an exaggerated sweep of his arms. When he reached the podium, he fumbled with the microphone for a few seconds. Then he smiled at Alvarez mockingly as he raised the height of it. Uh, I think the real chaos will start now. Yeah, let's hope not. Victor turned to President, uh, President Nines and bowed slightly. Mr. President. Uh, he then turned back at us and stared out in the hall for a few seconds. Fellow delegates, it is true that the world today faces a multitude of challenges. In the midst of these challenges, the world's most powerful leaders gather here in Kairut. And what do they do? They make threats, promote hate, and spread lies. Is this the alliance of nations we all want? Where is the cooperation and friendship? Where is the unity? I want to remind you of the wars that the West fought on our soil, of the foreign troops who occupied our, t our country and seized our valuable resources. I want to remind you how they stole the oil from our sacred soil, and they did not know when to stop. The ATO soldiers left, but their interference never ceased. They financed our rebel groups, whose only purpose is to create terror inside our country. So, fellow delegates, don't you dare speak about the veil before you acknowledge your involvement in our civil war, before you acknowledge your own dark past. Well, he's not entirely wrong. It's true that the Western powers had their hands in the valence of war, but it doesn't justify the apparition. Sorry, you already know my take on dealing with him. As is well known, after the tremendous tragedy of the Valence of War, Akazi made a deal with United Cantona, where they agreed upon the withdrawal of their troops on the removal of half of our army. Not only did they weaken us, we are left alone in facing the genocide of Bluish Freedom Front, which the ATO funds together with Romberg. Just like the delegate before me, I will show you some of the evidence of foreign interference. He picked up a large stack of papers and waved them back and forth. I have clear evidence of direct aid from, from Rambarak to the Polish Freedom Front. They smuggled tons of KS-74s in Valen. They smuggled in their spies, smuggled in mercenary commanders. Mm. I guess go with that one. He's finally talking about it. We're not the only ones now. Yeah, so it seems. These documents will be published everywhere. Copies have already been sent to the investigative affairs of the Alliance of Nations. I expect this organization to do its task and investigate this properly instead of leaving Valen behind as they have always done. Coming back to the claims of a lesbian representative, first, there is no evidence of civilian massacres by the Vasic forces, nor the so-called purges minorities. Second, the operation is limited only to the militant BFF, not the Blutes in general. Third, we know your government is also implicated in the funding of the BFF and that your oil companies aided their militants during the operation. Fourth, as we state, we only took what was ours. The companies uh, the delegates spoke of are not only aiding militants, but they were brought to Valen by force. Know that Valen will no longer recognize the right of any other country to determine what type of weapons we are permitted to possess, or what type of policies we follow within our borders. Valen sounds stronger and more united than ever. Our people have spoken. The enemy inside our borders are crushed. Now, I ask every delegate here to read our reports on the connections of the West with the other militants in East Marcopa, and I ask the Alliance of Nations to do what's right. Valen only wants peace. Our people want peace. They are counting on the spot and understanding of all nations of the world. Their proclamation is, free Valen or death. And the assembly roared, with particularly loud applause coming from seats of Rican nations. He seems to be popular with Rika, doesn't he? 
Well, he played the victim here pretty strongly, and his anti-imperial stance has definitely earned him sympathy for the Americans. Most of that continent has still not achieved stability after gaining their independence from the colonial suzerains. And it's easy to forget it's only been a few years since the revolutions. Victor slowly walked back to his seat as he applauded himself. He saluted the Rican delegates, delegates as he passed them. Next, President Nines invited Martin Van Horten to the podium. He walked up to the microphone with quick steps. He was frowning and clenched his fists. I could almost see his jaw trembling. Seems like Martin isn't in the mood. Yeah, can you blame him? Vox and Hash is occupied Helion. Mr. President, fellow delegates of the Assembly and friends, it is an honor to be with you today. I wish that we could meet under different circumstances. Once again, the CSP nations, and in particular Vogsen, have shown us that they are now what they're willing to do to achieve their political aims. I must sadly say that the world has left us alone. We were one of the first countries to propose proper cooperation among Eastern Macopan nations. And yet, when we were threatened by the Vogsanian expansionism, nobody came to our side. Although Mr. Alvarez voices indirect support for us early in today's session, I can't keep myself from wondering where he was when our lands were on invasion by the very socialists he spoke about. So, here I am, asking for the support of the fellow me member states of the Alliance of Nations. Agnoli is under attack by Voxent. A loud banging noise emerged from the table of Voxlandian delegates. All of them were pounding their fists on the table. I kept watching. Mr. President, please moderate the assembly. This is more than disrespectful. Emery Cagle began shouting curses as Nines repeatedly banged his gavel for order. After a minute of back and forth shouting, the noise settled, and Nines allowed Martin to continue. As you all know, Helianand, which has been a territory of, Ag of Agnoli for more than three decades, was invaded by Vogsland in a sudden attack. Not only did they unlawfully occupy our island, they brought nuclear missiles to the island the moment our forces retreated. In the midst of all this conflict, Soldan gave United Cantana docking rights in the largest naval base. That base currently holds an entire fleet from Cantana. With the access given to them by Soldan, the United Cantana Vogs and United Forces now roaming our seas. Millennia of this terror surrounds us on all sides. But we must not falter. I invite all member states to find a resolution in accordance with Article 11 of the Falenco Treaty, enforcing the immediately, immediate dismantling of all missiles from Helion. I must also remind you that under Article 3 of the Ventry City Treaty, the Alliance of Nations must ensure the withdrawal of the occupying force from the island. I call the democratic world's action against the tyranny of millennialism, authoritarianism, militarism, and extremism. The banging noise started again. Hegel stood up and approached the, uh, the rostrum. You're a spineless jerk, a lackey of our cause in imperialism. President Nines called for silence and started hitting the gavel. What does he think he's doing? All of your complaints against us are a direct result of your capitalist and neo-colonialist systems. Uh, President Nines, please, w what is this? President Nines smacked his gavel in vain as a shouting match broke out in the assembly. Finally, after a few minutes, the other Vogsani delegates convinced Hegel to sit back down. I believe I don't need to speak more about the subject. Everything is clear as day. Mr. Hegel's actions speak volumes about the reality of Vogsen and the corrupted ideology. I hope to see this conflict resolved with the help of the Alliance of Nations soon. He quickly left the podium and nodded to the other Agnolian delegates. The two left the, uh, the two left the assembly hall. President Nines announced the next speaker, Emmerich Hegel. Hegel immediately took his place and spoke in a low, seething tone. Thank you. I watched Hagel and waited for him to continue. Yeah, here we go. First of all, I want to extend a due welcome to the, the new states of Rica that have joined this organization. After fighting for years against colonialism and imperialism, they have more than earned our membership votes. I am overjoyed to see them finally represented in this assembly. As our numbers grow, more states are represented in this stage. We come ever closer to finding resolutions to the conflicts that plague us. For hundreds of years, the dominant economies of Mercopa raised, pillaged, and exploited the continents of Rica and China. Sadly, Volkswagen was also part of this plunder in the years before the revolution, when it still clung to the idea of imperialism. But when our masters found their voice, the old colonial powers and the new financiers turned against them. These powers did whatever they could to hamper our revolutions. They did not want the people to be heard. They are scared of us for showing the possibility of a better path. Of course they don't want us to succeed. 
We threaten the productivity that runs on the blood and sweat of their working class. And now they have started labeling us the aggressors, yet we all know it was the Akazians who built up military bases all around Makopa. It was the ATO that was first formed to fight against Millennialism. Honestly, he's completely right. Yeah, do you think so? He's not entirely wrong. Heli Lind was and was, is, and will be Vaxani territory. Our intervention in the island is completely justified. Uh, Mr. Delegates? Okay, whatever. Mr. Delegates brought up the Falenko and Venture City Treaties. However, they're forgetting about the Treaty of Constantium. Vox had exercised his right to intervene on behalf of our people who were being oppressed and massacred by the Igdoli government just because they did not recognize uh, an appointed governor. They didn't get to elect one. We acted in full accordance with the second article of the treaty. If there is a side to be blamed, it is the state which murders its minorities for publicly showing support to our nation. Uh, there were also claims about illegal missiles. No country in the world has the right to determine what type of uh, weapons we import. If there is conflict, the alliance can resolve. Let's start with the Akazian base on Ramnos Island. Lesbia has been housing Akazian troops and missiles by our border for years. None of the member states have even talked about it. I also want the member states to look into the Akazian bases in Lesbia. And if the Alliance of Nations truly claims to have the people's best interests at heart, they cannot say silence about what the Agnoli government did in Hellion, how they took away the rights of our people. Perhaps then there could be proper dialogue between our nations, and the Alliance of Nations could finally demonstrate that it can serve its intended purpose. But unfortunately, the Alliance of Nations remains all too willing to overlook such human rights violations. However, the Volksani government is ready as always to fight the forces of oppression and colonial servitude on behalf of free people everywhere. He raised his left fist. Uh, a revolution was corner. Was that Swordish? Did I catch that right? And he said the revolution will come, yes, but it was in old Vogish. Very similar to Swordish, right? Some words are even written the same way, but I'm surprised he got that from his accent. Most of the delegates from Sheena, Rika, and Katana responded with thunderous applause. And Eagle shook hands with them as he walked back to his seat. President Nines announced the next speaker, Queen Beatrice Livingston. Dear President of the Assembly, dear delegates, dear leaders of the world, just as my fellow Eastern Macopan delegates spoke about the troubles plaguing our continents, I also have to bring attention to the plight of the people of the North. The Alliance of Nations, the ATO, the CSP, and even the OMAC have never supported our people when they have been through tragic atrocities. Unlike many of the Western countries here, we never see financial aid or natural disasters struck our lands. The pain of our people is never recognized, not even when they face the threat of genocide by the hands of the Swordish kings. In light of all that, I implore this alliance to take a closer look at the actions of our southern neighbors. They took in traitors and gave them protection. Their president himself came to power amid murder and unrest. Yet people from his administration have the guts to blame our government for inciting violence. And they expect the world to believe their lies. They can't let her speak about us like that. Yeah, let's first hear out. Nothing else, we don't want to be a dick like Hegel. Solomon closed their borders to innocent bloodish, innocent bloodish people fleeing from them being massacred by the Vasic forces. They even supported and cooperated with Valen in the ethnic war against the bloodish people. Aren't before that, Solomon even aided the illegal occupation of Hellion by Voxen. They are increasing their military presence rapidly to further their dark aims. I hereby invite all of you to determine the initiation of a proper intergovernmental investigation into Solomon. If the Alliance continues to shirk its given duties, you can trust in Rumberg to take matters into her own hands. It is also important to point out that Rumberg will not send idly by if more Cantana military are transferred to East Makupa. I hereby condemn both the CSP and Solon for allowing United Cantana to settle in our region. Before I finish, I also want to say, Mr. Smolak, I am looking forward to reading your report. I wonder what this so-called evidence is all about. Know that your standard does not work on us. Know that we are ready to die for our freedom. Know that our kingdom stands firm and strong. Expect a grand awakening. Thank you. Grand awakening? That yeah, sounded like a threat. She left the rostrum without getting much applause. Then President Nine spoke my name. Mr. Anton Rain, President of Solon, I invite you to address the assembly. David immediately started applauding. Yeah, good luck, Mr. President. I walked up to the rostrum and took my place at the podium. In front of me were some of the most powerful leaders in the entire world. I looked them in the eyes. It is an honor to be here. I'm 
let's go with this one. Southern remains committed to the Alliance of Nations and the ideals that gave birth to it. Um, hmm. Let's see. Let's go with this one. Yeah, let's go with this bottom one. Try and promote peace as much as possible so we can hopefully get them to uh, condemn Rumbert. We must remain devoted to the dream of a peaceful and free world. A united world. <laughs> Let's try this one. Our world is faced with the dangers of division, the dangers of large military alliances and nuclear arms races. Uh, let's go with this one. We like keep supporting the uh, Alliance of Nations. Now it is more important than ever to set aside our differences and unite under this charter. Uh, obviously, we want to address the topics that have been mentioned, so we'll go with that one. Let's see. This one. We are deeply saddened by the tragic events that took place in Valen. I have to admit that operation resulted in many unnecessary deaths. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. I'd also like to respond to Mr. Van Horten. We were in no way involved with the Heliolin incident. Oh, that might not have been the right one, because, well, whatever, it's fine. But we'll go with that. In any case, Sardin will do whatever it takes to achieve peace in Eastern Mercopa. And I would also like to address the Queen of Rumberg. Let's go with that one. Sordlin always wanted to have peace between our nations, yet we are being threatened by Rumberg. We wanted to be diplomatic even when Rumberg shot down our plane. I also have some evidence to show to the assembly. Mr. Smolak was right about the KA-74s. We discovered that many militant groups in Sordlin were being financed or armed by Rumberg. I think I want this one, yeah. There's another important piece of evidence that we have, provided to us by someone close to the Rumbergian government. Mr. Hailstone was branded as a traitor in Rumberg for blowing the whistle on the country's hidden nuclear facilities. Uh, let's go with that one. I hear my call on the Alliance of Nations to serve its duty. Rumberg and its nuclear facilities must be properly investigated. Uh, thank you for listening to our concerns. I wish to see a resolution from the AN soon. Um, let's go with this one. We stand and always will stand for the rights of the people of Sorlin and Eastern Mercopa, just as those in other continents. Long live the Alliance of Nations. Long live unity and peace. Um, hmm. Let's just keep rehashing the peace thing. Peace in Mercopa, peace in the world. There was some applause from the assembly. Thank you. I left the podium. I walked back to my seat. David did not stop plotting until I sat back down. Uh, how was it? Yeah, it was not a bad speech, Mr. President. You did well. President Nines announced the next speaker, Dwight Walker. Mr. President, I want to first want to congratulate you on your election to this high office. Mr. Secretary, delegates of the United Alliance of Nations, ladies and gentlemen, fellow friends. We meet again in our quest to bring peace and light into this world. But even though some of the clouds have lifted, the world has not yet escaped the darkness. The Cantonist security pact is rapidly expanding its influence. It is very troubling to see a democratic nation of Mercopa be invaded by these millennium's powers. I refer, to, uh, refer of course, to Helion's occupation of Oxen. This is an attack against the lasting peace the world has enjoyed since the century of revolutions. Today, our peacekeeping obligations are being tested by United Catan and the Millennium's bloc. We fail to counter and stop this threat. 
we stay idle and allow them to build new walls and weapons of hostility. If the attackers do not face any consequences, then this unstable peace we believed we had built will be the world's downfall. Prosperity will po uh, posterity will point its finger at us for not stopping it. Emmerich Hagel and the other Volkslandian delegates started making noise again. This time, Hagel had taken off his shoe and was banging the table with it. They have no words. The Chancellor's gone mad. Their AA is getting ridiculous. He's not even ashamed at his age. Despite his claims, the CSP's actions would only bring about war. We believe the United Canton and Arcasia, together with their allies, could come to an understanding. For our mutual benefit and our desire to avoid the destruction of the world. Yet United Cantana keeps acting in complete disregard to international law. Their allies are forcefully taking land and imposing their own values on the people of those lands. I'll say this to the leaders of United Cantana. If either of us is to be secure, we need a peaceful cooperation, not nuclear missiles. Uh, whatever. <laughs> nuclear missiles shows naval superiority or invasions. If the leaders of United Cantana fail to demilitarize Helion with complete disarmament of the nuclear missiles and withdrawal of the occupied Voxanian forces, the ATO will have to take matters into our own hands. Hegel stood up with a shoe in his hand. Uh, what is this supposed to mean? You are promoting war in the Alliance of Nations. Mr. President, this cannot... Nine slammed the gavel down and shouted, Silence, please. Mr. Chancellor, please let me finish. We did not interrupt you when you addressed the assembly. Finally, I propose that the Alliance of Nations undertake the noble cause of helping the people of the world through rewriting and properly enforcing its human rights declaration. The Alliance of Nations cannot survive as a static organization. Its size and duties are increasing enormously. It should adapt to the changed world. But peace and rights do not rest in the hands of this organization alone. They rely on the hearts of our people and the spirit of cooperation between all nations. So let it be known, my fellow inhabitants of this world, let us take our stand and see if we can finally achieve a lasting peace. Thank you. Most of the assembly applauded the speech, the ATO delegates in particular. That speech had very dangerous connotations to it. Uh, yes. I hope we won't be seeing a direct war between the superpowers anytime soon. That will be the destruction of the planet. The applause continued for some time. Walker shook hands with various delegates on his way back to his seat. President Nines announced the last speaker before the break. It was Leon Milenev. Millennia slowly walked up to the rostrum in his iconic suit. All the CSP delegates stood up and applauded him. Honorable Chairman and fellow delegates to the Alliance of Nations, here we are again at the most esteemed meeting of state representatives in the world. However, increasingly, we are being threatened, disregarded, attacked, or ignored in this assembly. The representative Arcasia has just shown this unfriendly attitude towards us yet again. Arcasia would have you believe we are standing in the way of lasting peace. Yet the peace they talk about was only possible thanks to our missiles and our growing base in the developing world. The ACO kept waging wars against people's revolutions and forcing new independent states to be their puppets, blinding them to themselves through the Arkazian leader. And now, yet another Arkazian presence is telling us that we are the aggressors and they are the keepers of peace. We will not be silent anymore against these lies. When was this peace you talk about? Where was this cooperation between our countries? Have you ever accepted our invitation to talk about denuclearization? If you don't like us, don't accept our deals, don't listen to our concerns, and keep pointing fingers at us, or why did you invite us to the United of Nations? Every year, United Cantana comes to this assembly to address the real problems of real people. People who suffer because of your systems, your walls, and your ignorance. Whether you like it or not, we'll keep representing the laborers, the slaves, the oppressed of this world. And believe it or disregard it, history is on our side. We say to the representatives of countless countries, come and visit us, come see the revolution working in Kintana. Show our continent to your people without distorting the reality. If you cannot do that, then you need not go. We believe socialism will triumph over capitalism in the end, but such is the logical conclusion of the development of humankind. This time, lesbian delegates started laughing very loudly. Some other delegates booed. Now I'll just keep watching. You can keep laughing, gentlemen. Communism will bury you. Suddenly, the laughing turned into shouting. If you really believe in cooperation, we'll be waiting. We are not going anywhere. However, if the ATO keeps intervening in our matters, it is natural that the CSP would react. Despite threats from the ATO, Rumberg, or any other national organization, we must not succumb to further division of violence. 
But we must ask ourselves, what do the people of our countries expect of us? They surely don't want war and bloodshed. So let us leave to our children and grandchildren good memories of our time and a better future for all. Let them look at history and say, once there were great divisions and complex problems, but the leaders of the world came together in the Alliance of Nations and succeeded in settling them in order to ensure our peaceful lives. Let us act in such a way to make this session not a session of threats, but a session of hopes and the realization of them. The governments of United Cantana and the United Peoples of Cantana are ready to serve their duties for world peace. Long live the People's Revolution. Yeah, that was a pretty good speech. Yeah, I'm just very concerned about the rising tensions between them and Arcasia. Assembly broke into massive applause. The applause continued for some time. Millennium slowly walked back to his seat as president announced a break. Yeah, that was a lot. It was troubling. Tensions are too high. Yeah, it's quite scary to be honest. We need to be careful. We walked out of the hall to have some lunch and fresh air. Fantastic. All right. Well, this video has already gone on for way longer than usual. So that feels like as good a time as any to uh, go ahead and call it for today. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you all next time.